uh, what what words does he use to describe the the relationship they would have? They would be like what master and slave. Yeah, master and slave. Was that Gibson? Yes. Um, Tibetan. Any chance? Kansak Pungpo. Uh, those are the th that would be the non metaphorical names for them. Um, Wang Gir Wang Girja. No. Um, Kulpo. Okay, I'm going back to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who said Kulpo? Chunzong. Nice, Chunzong. What about, uh, so Kulpo means what? Servant. Yeah, Servant. so then. Chunzong, I think he should have given you some money for that. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Allison, give her some of Geshe's money. This <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 okay. All right. It doesn't exist. I tried. Um, uh, what about master? J. Yeah, J. J. Well, yeah, cool. Yeah, nice guys. Look at that. See, all the silence. Sometimes you just got to be patient with your family, and they'll come through for you. Um, okay. According to Choni Lama, the question of whether or not a person is self-standing comes down to deciding what type of entity a person would be. Or what are the two options given for the way that a person might exist? Tibetan and English. So the person is a what or a what? And understanding this would be critical to deciding whether or not they are self-standing. Are they this kind of person or this kind of, is a person this kind of something or, or some other kind of something? Are they the body and mind? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, this is one of those moments where I'm going to be patient and let's see if we can ride it out. Um, it is related to, uh, something, um, a Sautrantica idea, um, is someone squeaking in the background? Oh. Yes. Oh. Wrong dog. Wrong dog? Yeah. Are they the wrong ten? Are they the... Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Longton would be the Sautrantic equivalent, but in this case, uh, yeah, um, Utpala said wrong dope. Yeah, wrong dope or? She dope. She dope. Yeah, cool. Yeah, look, see? See? Everybody's so clever, right? Which is what? What do they mean? Idealization. Yeah, versus? And, uh, Actual I example. Yeah, cool, right. I'm saying the example the idea is based on to try and work in the word she but i don't know this is debatable this is highly maybeable okay so for a person who believes that things are self-standing which of these do they believe is true of a person mm. Did my I'm gonna go ahead and say she do she do yeah, cool. Right. Sounds good. Isn't it shin Shindo? Um, yeah, would have to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Nice. Thank you, Adam. Um, okay. Okay, here's another big fat monster question. Um, what are the two famous divisions? This part's easy. What are the two famous divisions of obstacles on the path to enlightenment? Tibetan and English, please. Shichub and Shichub. Say again. She drip and she drip. One of those was definitely right. Mm -hmm. You just said something funny. I think you know the answer, but something funny came out. She she and drip is one of them. Uh, she, she drip is one of them. And drip. Yeah, oh, which means what and what? The obstacle to uh, nirvana and the obstacle to omission. Cool, great. Okay, so according to the consequence branch of the middle way, okay, which of these types of obstacles, okay, is the tendency to see things as real? Ninja. Okay, what about the seeds for that tendency? The other one. Shades. Everyone agree with him?
everyone agrees with you, but they're all wrong. No, they're both, um, uh, they're both, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, they're both Nyundrup. Okay, they're both Nyundrup. Um, both of them are obstacles to removing negative emotions. Okay, and then last question about this. Okay. Um, uh, Oh no, it's not the last. Which which of these two, okay, these two which we've decided are Nyundrip, which of these must be removed by enemy destroyers of the greater way, according to the consequence branch? Denzin. Yeah, so Denzin, what about the seeds for that tendency? So it would be both, right? In this case? Yeah, both. Tim, what about for enemy destroyers of the lesser way? Just the noon drips. Or just the tendency. The tendency, yeah. Mm, everyone agree with them? Chinsum? Uh, uh, no, that's the obstacle. The tendency is the obstacle. Right. So which of yeah, those have to be removed for enemy destroyers of the lesser way? Both, I think. Yeah, both. Right. Yeah, cool. So it's a little bit of a trick question. Okay. Both the tendency to see things as real and the seeds for that tendency are obstacles to removing your negative emotions. Okay. Um, and um, according to the consequence branch of the middle way, um, both have to be removed for all enemy destroyers, be there of the greater way or lesser way. So they don't say that somehow you can have some lesser version if you're a lesser arhat all arhats have to remove both the tendency to see things as self-existent as well as the seeds to see things as self self-existent because mm -hmm. those are obstacles to removing your negative emotions so ben just understand so this is a, according to the higher middle ways view but yeah from, but from the lower views it's not necessarily the case from the lower views it's not necessarily the case and they might they do, in fact, in lower schools talk about, oh, maybe a, a lower R hat has to do this, but a higher R hat has to do this, has to get rid of the, you know, just these, just the seeds, sorry, just the tendency to see things as wrong for a, a lower R hat, but an, a higher R hat would also have to get rid of the seeds, whereas we would say, you got to get rid of both to be an R hat, period. Cool. Um, which I thought was kind of cool, too. Um, Lexo, Lexo. Cool. Um, now, Lama, a uh, bonus question is only for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is just that I, I, I need help. I just struggle a little bit. And we could look at this on your screen or my screen. I was just, I just kind of had a request to maybe go back and look at this section a little bit. Because um, I, I struggled here a little bit. Um, uh, the the wording felt really weird to me, right? The question of whether or not um, to me too, right? Like whether whether or not um, something is uh, self standing uh, depends on thinking that things are um, a wrong dog, but not a shin dog. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Uh, Rangya tube me tube. So tube me tube means whether or not it can stand on its own, right? Yeah. Now that whether or not it's capable of standing on its own, right? Tube me tube. Yeah. The question of that depends on the on the actual example of the person, right? The, okay. The we're talking about the actual example of the person, and we're not talking about the idealized person, okay? Right. Uh, because the, those who believe that the awareness of your thoughts is the end of the road, right? Is the person. Yes. Uh, would say that the person is the substantial one and not this, by the way, this proves that studying Adam's text is useful. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Zaya is equivalent to Rangdok or Shindok? Well, we struggled with that, but yeah. um, uh, uh, we, we were saying uh, Shindok, 
in in last class at least uh well now i'm saying wrong boat right uh, okay. yeah it's the more substantial because it's the wrong ten okay and then that's lower school right second school so now we're saying wrong dok is wrong ten and shin dok is chitsen i think that's where he's going yeah yeah okay so be, she it'd be tempting to call shin dok the wrong ten because it's a ten she uh right but it apparently that doesn't hold it's the wrong the wrong is uh, similar to rang ten okay and so. the she is not similar to uh ten she okay okay and then is the implication here that um mind uh namshe is a kind of ze so yeah yeah okay, okay. Yeah. So the, it has to be zeyu because there's a stuff, there's a stuff that's mind. And so that means that it has to be a, a wrong thing for them because that makes it a changing thing. And then for the lower schools, changing things are wrong sense, are wrong dope, as opposed to idealizations. Yeah, they, I, and I guess you got to take it back to whether or not it can stand on its own, right? Yeah. So, if it were not substantial, if it, if, it, if it did stand on its own, right, wouldn't it have to be more substantial? Is that what they're saying? It's, yeah, maybe, oh, right, okay. Because we keep saying, rangya tu be zeyu, right? Rangya tu be zeyu, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure, he seems to be, it seems to actually like a brilliant attempt to explain why Rangya Tupa is Zeya, you know, right. uh, because it goes from Rangya Tupa to Rang Ten to Zeya, you know. Right. It's okay, it's, right. It's yeah. kind of cool. It's kind of okay. cool. Okay. Okay. It's I a see. difficult sentence, and I, I, you know, we'll have to work on it when you get to translating it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll keep playing with it. Mm -hmm. um, that helps. I mean, part of what's really confusing for me is, is the, just the phrasing, uh, you know, whether or not you think this depends on believing this and not believing this, but it doesn't depend on whether you believe this or believe this. So it seems like the first half of that phrase yeah. is up in the air whether or not you would believe it, but by the second half of the phrase, it depends on believing one and not the other, and then he's decided which of the two you believe. Uh, not so much that uh, it's it's not belief really. It's just the the question of whether or not a thing stands on its own. That's the toot me too, yeah. The toot me too, right? But then the question of whether it's a wrong dog or a a shin dog, he's decided yeah. then by the second half of that phrase that yeah. you do believe it's a wrong dog and you don't believe it's a shin dog. Exactly, and uh, the nay here means hinges on, hinges upon. Oh, the nay means hinges upon. Okay. Okay. Uh, is decided from. Uh, okay. Is, yeah. okay. So okay. play with that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Paul. I also uh, usefully go to Betz's text on this question because it, yeah. it was pretty, it's the same author. Right. And so why don't you go see what language he used for her text? As I remember, it was quite extensive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I definitely will. All right. Cool. Um, all right, I'm going to see if I can give you the plane back here. Uh-uh, come here. Oh, yeah, let me see. Um, okay, I want, I got it. Uh, we're in sort of a difficult place here, okay? Yeah. And uh, we could just go on and not talk about it. But that's not the mixed nuts ethic. Yeah. So, you know, I was tempted to go on, but my conscience got a hold of me. Lamgi uh, Pungs, we're supposed to be discussing what the consequence school thinks the path gets rid of, right? Yes. And we're supposed to be discussing what the consequence school thinks the path gets rid of, okay? And. In this school, it's uh, an obstacle to nirvana. 
when you think that things are real and the seeds okay yes uh, and as you said in your homework it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a higher track or hot or a lower track or hot okay uh, now this paragraph is really difficult and uh, I think we should slow down and make sure we got it okay okay so uh, first of all the whole thing is couched between a beginning and an ending right Rangyupatar Miche. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. They don't say things the way that the independent branch does. Yeah. Uh, they don't accept it, right? They yeah. don't accept. Uh, and then everything between that is the Rangyupa's idea. Right. Okay? Yeah. So we got to keep that in mind. Everything between Miche, they don't believe, they don't accept as the consequence school does, okay? Blah, 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 Okay. Right. Yeah. And here's the wrong idea of the of uh, here's the wrong idea of the independent school. Uh, they believe the Denzin plural. Yeah. The, the types of the seeing things as being real, which we're taking to be the person and the parts of a person. Yeah, good. They, they say that's an obstacle to uh, if total enlightenment. Buddhahood, yeah. They say that's an obstacle to Buddhahood. And then uh, who's quoting the Abhisamaya Alankara of Maitreya? Who's the who? independent branch, which is kind of right in line for them. Good, yeah. It, and in fact, that's the text we use in the monastery. And as I mentioned, it's, I think it's 60 pages and you just spend 12 years on it. Uh, and uh, so, and I memorized it for fun when I was younger, but anyway, Ngunto uh, Kenne, the Abhisamankara says, Sagulani Chambui, very famous, yeah, etc. Uh, meaning that they divide uh, Denzin into what? Nine parts or nine yeah. types or levels of it. What would you call, like this, what are the name? The first one is? <laughs> uh, 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 subtle, subtle or small, subtle? Nope, the opposite. <laughs> oh, big, big? Yeah, big, big meaning uh, obvious, obvious, but not strong, strong. Okay, the, gross, gross, yeah, gross. Yeah, Major the gross. gross one. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then Chung, 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 Chung is the nastiest one. And it's oh. most like a trace. Okay. Denzin. So the hardest one to get rid of is Chung, Chung. Okay. So we got Chambu, 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 Ding, Chambu, Chung. Dingy Chambu, Dingy Ding, Dingy Chung. Chung, Chambu, Chung, Ding, Chung, Chung. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they say, those are eliminated rimki gradually yeah one by one by nine different parts of melams at the gomu yeah nine different like un uninterrupted meditations yeah or nine different direct perceptions of emptiness yeah. during gomla uh, yeah. during the path of habituation for mahayana okay um, now i well first of all I thought it'd be nice to get the whole verse, yeah. which is helpful. So let's read the whole verse here. Uh, it start. I'm gonna block it out here. Uh, okay. So just just read. Let's let me make it nicer. Okay, and by the way, I'm gonna, I was gonna make you do it, but I'll do it. Uh, what, what am I gonna correct here? Uh, uh, yeah, nice. Oh, nice. Okay. And this is new. Okay. 
Okay, so please read this and let's try to translate it. This is the full verse that he only gave the first line for. Okay. Chambo-yi, chambo lasso chima yi nyembo chung wei chung du la sok pe lan ni da pa yin. Yeah, uh, Sagulani. Now, as far as these nine uh, levels, okay, which is nine levels of the process of eliminating the tendency to think that things are real, okay, yeah. uh, the, the big, big one, okay, meaning the more obvious one, which is supposed to be easier, right? Okay, yeah. uh, these impurities, okay, yeah. uh, the corresponding nyambos, antidote, yeah, are chungu chungu. Uh -huh. oh, so, oh, the subtle of the subtle? Um, no, meaning the low power of the low power, <laughs> okay. So, ah. for the most obvious forms of holding things to be real, ah. you use the least of the strength of the antidotes. Okay. Right. Okay. Got it? Cool. Yeah. La sope yeah. lamni. Talk by in. And that's how you purify yourself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and I thought you'd like to read a few comments by Tsongkhapa. Sure. Uh, and you might want to craft a footnote from it. And I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to make you do the whole thing. But it'd be, I think it'd be interesting to, uh, uh, to just get a few comments about it, okay? okay. And let me see how far we want to go. Um, I think uh, let's let's just go this far, okay? okay? Let's just read these two sentences. What's this book, by the way? Uh, string, I mean, string of golden beads. Uh, yeah, we call it Lekshe Serting. And uh, it's a very sizable commentary on the Abhisamankara by Tsongkhapa. And uh, it's even two volumes, right? And uh, we don't study it that much in the monastery. Uh, because it's, it's, it's got a reputation that he was young when he wrote it. He was 20 something, he was 21 or something. And he just went on and on and on and on. And, uh, you know, he wrote two volumes on a 50 page work, 60 page work. And, uh, you know, we don't read it that much, but it, it's, it's pretty, obviously it's pretty thorough. So let's read these two sentences from there, okay? Shedip la duna yang mi tete. Deni tong lam gi ngar gi jik tembe lam gi pang jar gelte lam deni shed drip yimbe so. Okay. Uh, so he's talking about denzin, right? Not may, and Tony Lama would have called it denzin num, right? These two tendencies <laughs> to see things as real. Now translate this shedib la duna yang mite. Um, it, uh, like it's not right to think that these are obstacles to omniscience. Great, great. If you accept that these are obstacles to omniscience, that's also incorrect because any uh -huh. Um, oh, because you uh saw emptiness. You you had the path of seeing. Oh, they follow the, the path of seeing because you just had the path of seeing? Uh, no, even before the path of seeing. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, these are pangjas of jik dembelam. Oh, these are things to give up even on a worldly path? Yeah, these are things which are eliminated even by, let's say, an intellectual understanding of the pen, okay? Huh. So there are, there are, parts of holding to things as real which are eliminated even before the path of seeing okay okay uh, 
uh, and those are eliminated by paths which are still within the world, meaning you are still conceptualizing things as if they came from their own side. Okay. So is he, he's referring to the first two paths sort of as Chiktembe Lam? Yep. Yeah. Especially okay. the second path. Okay. Chiktembe uh, Lam. Then it would be if these were shade ribs, right? If yeah. these tendencies to see things as self existent were obstacles to omniscient, it right. would be Gelwa. It, it would be contradictory to them being removed prior to the path of seeing. Exactly. Yeah. It'd be contradictory to say that they were eliminated by, you know, intellectuals' understandings of emptiness even before the path of seeing. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because now here's a tricky thing. Lam Tengi Shedim. Oh, oh, the, because the path itself is an obstacle to omniscience? Yeah. Those uh, intellectual understandings of the pen are something you have to eliminate before wow. you can become a Buddha. <laughs> okay? Whoa. Don't know okay. what to make of that. So don't come and don't don't come and tell me that uh, you know an intellectual belief in self-existence is something that you have to give up to become a Buddha, because even before because before the path of seeing, it'd be contradictory to say that before the path of seeing, uh, you got rid of some of them with a path which itself has to be eliminated by. Uh, but before you can get to omniscience, okay? Oh, I guess. Even as you are understanding the pen, you are believing it to be self-existent. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, they are stained. Yeah. It's, anyway, this is a pretty radical statement. Let's keep going. Yep. Uh, yeah, stop there and tell me what it means. Uh, um, uh, um, the nine things that you give up right. um, on the path of habituation to, to, near, to beyond the world? Yeah, meaning he's, he's uh, juxtapositioning worldly understandings of the yeah. pen, for example, and understandings beyond the world, which our author called parchimelum. Right. Meaning direct perceptions of emptiness, okay? At, at, at the fourth path, okay? So to, to, to say that there are nine versions of the direct perception of emptiness on the fourth path, and they get rid of increasingly subtle and more difficult to remove versions of holding to things as true, right? Yeah. Uh, and you say, we gotta go through these nine rimki. Yeah, but that's wrong. Um, yeah, and so, what's the uh, pen uh, mean here? I was just going to ask, is that like iterations or like, like the divisions of the nine? Uh, yeah. Gutsen means a group, a group of nine. Okay. Okay. A group of nine. Okay. okay. So to say that you go through this group of nine, uh, nine degrees of holding that things are real. Okay. Yeah. And you get rid of them one by one. Mite. Yeah, that's wrong. That belief is also wrong. Why? Yeah. Uh, this is Tsongkhapa talking. Okay. Then please well, go ahead. Because, um, uh, Tsitse Nyomong Gupa Pang Ja Sangye Su Tong, Gipa Pang Ja Sa Chupar Shepa Mitepe Chirte Nartaro. Yeah, because it would be incorrect uh -huh. to explain yeah. that uh, the ninth, uh, getting rid of the ninth negative emotion at the peak of existence, right? Uh -huh. uh, which is the fourth 
formless realm level birth, okay? Uh, Bangba, then that would have to be Buddhahood, okay? Okay. And then when you got rid of the eighth one, uh, that would be the tenth Bodhisattva Bhumi, okay? And that also doesn't make sense, okay? Why would that be? Why wouldn't it make sense? Or <laughs> no, I mean, why is he saying that? Because then if you got rid of the ninth, then that means the eighth would mean you're at Buddhahood? Uh, no. Uh, the, getting rid of the ninth would have to be Buddhahood, right? Uh, okay. According to them. Overcoming the subtlest of the subtle versions of believing that things are real. According, if they are Shidip, then that would be equivalent to reaching enlightenment. Okay. And then yeah. getting rid of the medium form of the subtle lack of belief in self-existence must constitute the 10th Bodhisattva Bhumi, which happens in some presentation, uh, Buddhahood is like 11. Okay. Okay. So okay. then just before that, if you got rid of the medium form of the lesser form of holding to things as real, and if that was an obstacle to enlightenment, then that would have to be the 10th Bodhisattva Bhumi, okay? And okay. That's, that's wrong based on what we just said. What's that? Yeah. That's wrong based on what we just said because we're saying that you get rid of those things prior to the direct perception of emptiness and not on the path of habituation through the bodhisattva levels. Yeah, something like that. Uh, or, or, well, actually, okay, you ready? This is weird. Uh -huh. uh, if you cannot get to enlightenment until you overcome the subtle form of the subtle, the subtlest form of the subtle form of believing that things are real, then that means the medium version of the subtle form of believing that things are real is itself a shidu. Okay. Okay, because <laughs> it's holding you back from achieving enlightenment, you, okay? Oh, it's yeah. still part of what you give up when you reach enlightenment. Sure, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, but of, of course, I mean, they're saying that all nine are. Um, uh, that's what he's denying. Oh, yeah, but then we're saying, okay, then a jikten le debe komlam, a direct perception of emptiness would, ha would still have to be something, yeah, something that you eliminate to get to Buddhahood, yeah. But he is saying okay, that it is then, something you do have yeah, to. Yeah, but then you couldn't call it Jigden Le Depa. Beyond the Sansara. Okay. You couldn't call it Beyond Samsara if. Uh, how could you call it Beyond Sansara if it was. How could you say that, that a, an, a realization that, would, that got you out of Sansara prevented you from reaching Buddhahood? Oh. Oh, okay. So now he's talking about um, the the realizations that got rid of um, your mistaken views as being the obstacles to omniscience. Yeah. Cool. According to them, right? <laughs> okay. So I don't know, I thought you'd like to hear Tsongkhapa's logic of why it's weird to call uh, misperceptions of reality obstacles to enlightenment, okay? It's a little uncomfortable. I know, I'm gonna take you a little farther, okay? Oh good. I'm gonna take you a little farther. We're gonna go to somebody easier. His name is Choni Lama. Oh, good. Okay. And this is from his commentary on those words. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
and I, I didn't clean it. I didn't clean up the, the break, the line breaks. I'm sorry for that, but okay. let's just read it. Okay. Okay. Um, Niba Tacheba la Sumle, Tangpo la Kachiknare, Ricky Kabndir, Gen Sawe, Kongpa Tar Tuk Tengur to Nepa Yino Serna. Okay. Uh, the other guy says, okay, yeah. Rick Kamdir, here in the discussion of Rick, which oh. is an abbreviation for? Uh, Nerik? Yeah, Rangshin Nerik. Uh, okay. What do you call it? Tathagata Garba. Okay. Uh, the, the seed of Buddhahood in all living beings is okay. called sometimes Taik. Okay. It's nerik. Oh. Nerik means a, a seed that exists by nature in all beings, or which has an ultimate nature. Okay. Okay. So, which is the emptiness of the Buddha, right? Uh, which we already have. Okay. Uh, the emptiness that allows Buddhahood to project onto it. Okay. So here in the discussion of rig, which is a big topic in the Abhisamankara. Okay. Yeah. The Gensawe Gomba. Um, Munto Kiankitsawe Gomba. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the, uh, the Gomba, the meaning of the true intent of the Abhisamayalankara. Root text, yeah. Uh, the true intent of the root text of the Abhisamayalankara, the ultimate true intent, Tian Gyotu Ne. Yeah, is to bring people to the um, uh, 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 higher branch of the middle way. Uh, this name means it's, it lies in, it lies within the Tengyur school. Okay. Okay. So what? So what the Abhisamankara really means is a, is a topic within the consequent school's beliefs. Okay. okay. So he's, what he's saying, the other guy is saying, if you really knew what the Abhisamankara was saying, you would understand that in its highest form, it is prasangika. Okay. It okay. amounts to prasangika. Tell me the name. Okay. Ser Serna. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, okay, now, so that guy has said, if you really understood Maitreya's writing in the Abhisama, the Jewel of Realizations, yeah. you would understand that it was prasangika. Okay. Wow. Okay. And we say, uh, Temi te uh, Wait, did you go up or down? You, you I went up. To up. Okay. No, that was up. Not true. No, well, that's not. You got to sound aggrieved, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Temi te portel. Ow! Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. De if it was like that. Um, yeah. Come, uh, dear. Denzin yundrup yin ge pa le te Okay, stop there. Uh, if, if, if the real point of this book by Maitreya was higher middle way, then in this cup, which is what? In, in the, oh, it's, it's Rick, I mean. It, um, yeah, in this discussion of the emptiness within us, which is already the emptiness of our future Buddhahood, right? Yeah. Cup here, our Buddha nature, okay? Nature, yeah, this is, in this discussion of Buddha nature, then, yeah. Denzin would have to be a nyundrin. Yeah, seeing things as being real would have to be an obstacle to omnis or sorry, to uh, nirvana. Which is what, who believes? Um, the, the independent branch. No. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Prasangika. Yeah, if this book was a, what do you call that? Uh, if this book was a Prasangika book in disguise. Yes. Okay. Then at this point where we discuss Buddha nature, the tendency to believe that things are real would have to really be an obstacle to nirvana, right? Yes. And this lay is now disjunctive. Okay. Whereas it is yeah. not. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, where it's not in this context. Uh, whereas it is not. In, in this book, exactly, yeah. Uh, if this book 
was a prosaic book in disguise, yeah. then at this juncture, when we're right. discussing good nature, then the tendency to see things as real would yeah. have to be an obstacle to nirvana. Right. But, but, but in fact, in fact, it is not in this, okay. in this case, okay? Yeah. Why is it not? Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, Chimar Detel, um, uh, Denzin Shedrip Yimbe, Yimbe, uh, Denzin Shid, oh, Shindrip Yimbe, Chir, um, Detel. Oh, uh, well, it's not because, uh, seeing things as real is an obstacle to, uh, uh because they are describing, yeah, no. exactly, yeah, exactly, because in this. In this discussion of Buddha nature, yeah. it is considered a shit. Right, right. They're considering it an obstacle to omniscience. And that's yeah. true. Yeah, so. yeah. And the guy says, I disagree that in this discussion of Buddha nature, holding the, the husband as coming from his own side is an obstacle to enlightenment. And we say, Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because uh Sagulani Chembo Yi. Shesoki, Denzin, Shejip, Du, Shepa, Tar, Kelembe, Chir. Good. Because they take that famous line about the. Now we go back to the famous line, okay? Yeah. Uh, the obvious of the obvious is eliminated by the, the uh, subtler of the subtle. Right. Okay. Or, sorry, the obvious of the obvious is gotten rid of. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the impurity, the, weak. the most obvious of the obvious impurities is eliminated by the least powerful of the least powerful antidotes, okay? Right, yeah. All right, let's go back to where we were. Yeah. Uh, because they say those lines that start with, and this is so uh, misleading to not give you the next two syllables. Yeah. Yeah, chembo e chembo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The big version of the big in the nine levels, she soki. These words are describing Denzin as being an obstacle to omniscience. Yeah, an obstacle to omniscience. Tar, shepatar, ke lembe Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, I think it'd be cool to do this last sentence, okay? And then, and then I want you to struggle and make a, a footnote out of these pieces, okay? okay? And I think it'd be sexy, okay? Okay. Uh, Kachi. Okay. I should have uh, cut it out for you. Okay. It's you okay. Uh, Kachi. Um, Ricky Kamdi Gongpa Tar Tuk Telngyur Du Nepe Yin No Serna Ona. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just about the same thing, actually. Yeah. Here in the discussion of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, still in the discussion of Rick. Buddha nature. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, on the topic that of all Buddha. beings have. The, the, the highest uh, intention of these lines right. is. Right. Yeah, if you say that it's found in the uh, consequence branch. Uh, yeah, it, this amounts to a, a consequence presentation. The, yeah. If you look at its highest intent. Okay, Serna? Yeah, well well then. Yeah, good. Nyen rang da chong ba yi na chong yi ngun sung de tok Nyong Yimbe Kyapar Kyapar Yeah, Tam Cha Tebe Chir. Well, then, I guess listeners, uh, listener and self made Buddha are hots. Good. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess if you're a listener of self made Buddha are hot, then you um, have a direct perception of emptiness. Yeah, now you got to know here, you got to know here that in the independent presentation of the, of the three tracks, yes, uh, Tomba Nyi is only perceived 
by people on the bodhisattva track. Right. Okay. Uh, right. On the lower tracks, it's a, a lower form of emptiness called dogme, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so are you telling me that Arhat on the lower two tracks have already perceived emptiness, uh, uh -huh. the most subtle and the most subtle form of no self nature. Okay. Yeah. Which they call emptiness that they have seen that directly. Uh, Dom Chad Tebeacher, because you're saying that's a reasonable position. Yeah, which means if that book by Maitreya was a really a Prasangika book, then those lower track arhats should have seen emptiness directly. Okay, because yeah, right. that's what the Prasangika say. Yeah, okay, because that is the position of the Prasangika. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then the guy says, okay, I got no problem with that. Yeah, these lower arhats they do see 100% emptiness, okay? Yeah. They yeah. do see not 50%, not 75%, okay? And we say, do me that day. No, you can't say that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and this is kind of like nails down your whole, your whole sentence, okay? This should give you enough ammunition to do a good footnote, okay? Do you mean that you cannot say that in the context of Buddha nature, in the context of this book by Maitreya, you cannot say that those lower arhats have seen 100% emptiness, okay? Mm -hmm. Because... This is a line from the Abhisamankara which says they are perceiving it through signs. Oh, okay. 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 Which means they yeah. still haven't seen it. How much? Uh, uh, yeah. So, like, especially when you discuss the pen, people are still holding the parts of the pen or signs of the pen as coming from their own side. Even when Geshe Michael stands up there and holds up a pen and explains why it's not coming from itself, people feel that it comes from itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. those lower arhats are like that, you know, they, they, they are seeing no self nature, but they're still holding it to come from its own side to some extent. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Then in, and that's a line in the Abhisamankara. Uh, and what that line is saying, okay, she, okay, what that line is saying is that, yeah. Yeah, there do exist. There do exist. Da chambas. Um, arhats. Nyan and rangsangyes. Who our listeners are self made Buddhas. Who are still chingba by Denzin. Yeah, who are bound by seeing things as real. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. And that's why you can't say that these lines are describing that that these that this book is really a Prasangika book. You can't say mm -hmm. that. Because the book itself says they are still seeing things with signs, meaning signs that come from the pen itself. Okay. Uh, okay. Now between all those, you know, flirt. Flirt with those. Uh, here you have the root text. Here you have uh, some kappas reason why the nine can are not correct. Why the nine cannot describe obstacles to enlightenment. And then Tony Lama helps you out. And between all those guys, I expect you to write a good footnote. Yay! Well, okay. So, so uh, can we just talk about this for a second? I mean, oh, um, dang, I was hoping we could just go on, but go ahead. Well, uh, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, um, why then, according to Tsongkhapa and Chuni Lama, I don't know, like if, if we can, you know, t talk about it as friends here for a moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Why, uh, why would it be so absurd to say that those um, nine uh, obstacles or levels of seeing things as self-existent are removed by those nine um, uh, antidotes on the path of habituation? Is that what we're denying? And then... Yeah, 
we're design, denying the whole concept that there are degrees to emptiness. Right. That's they, the main thing. That's the main thing. That's why I objected when they said uh, they used the word trauma to describe a telling gear war. And I, I mean, for my own edification, right, there's a lot there. But, I, you know, what I'm going to, what I would offer to the reader without making them too much more confused is, I, you know, mm -hmm. I feel pretty tempted for the most part, if we're just talking about that argument to limit it to saying that we say that that's something, well, that Jetson Kappa, for example, says that that's, that those are actually eliminated prior to the path of seeing or, uh, or maybe going leading up to the path of seeing. Um, yeah, you could say that. You could say that if there are degrees to emptiness. Well, well, the, the main point is, uh, and by the way, if you study the three tracks, the 15 paths, according to the lower middle way, a lot of it is centered on the degrees of no self nature to things and the degrees of no self nature to people and emptiness is the is the no self nature to things yes uh, subtle the subtle no right. self nature of things is what a bodhisattva sees when he sees emptiness directly yeah right yeah uh, so you know it i grew up on uh, you know the first thing Rinpoche taught me was the 15 components of the three tracks, I got used to thinking of all these degrees of emptiness. Then we got, much later, we got to higher middle way and they said, it's all ridiculous. There's no degrees to emptiness anymore. So it's, so. it's cool for, for me to know that, um, that there's this dispute that Chuni Lama is addressing about whether or not someone wants to say that Abhisamaya Lankara is secretly a Prasangika book. But yeah, in the context of a discussion of how does the pangcha different in prasangika from the pangcha accepted by the lower middle way and their ideas about what the pangjas are is kind of one of the big differences between the two parts of the middle way school yeah okay but my my responsibility to the reader here is yeah. to clarify for them um why we have a problem with the idea that those nine would be obstacles to omniscience and thus eliminated over the course of the path of habituation. Right. That you could say that. Well, no, uh, in the higher track. Yeah. In the highest. Right. Track. Right. Highest According track. to why, right. Why we say that in the highest track and the yeah. of why we say that is, yeah. um, because, um, because they're eliminated prior to that. Right. Yeah, and by the way, I'm just saying that to give this sentence to your reader yes. without a little explanation yes. is not mixed nuts style. Sure, right. You know, sure. Be, especially because it says the big of the nine. Right. And he didn't add big of the big. <laughs> and, right. and you could usefully just go to the fact, you could describe usefully in the footnote, I think, the fact that the this idea of the most obvious being uh, attacked by the least strong understanding. Yeah. Well, uh, and so. I can include, which we've done in the past, I can include the full quotation and put the parts of the yeah. quotation that we've added in square brackets. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, do that. by the way, you know, you're reaching the end of your text and uh, at the, in the last few pages of your text, you're going to have to do that extensively because it's pretty much just a list of, of, of names with no explanation. Okay. Uh, so I think we're going to have to beef up your text. We're going to have to continue to beef up your text. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Here Bob. we go. I just thought you guys might like to flirt with that. I, I mean, we don't understand it completely yet, to be honest, but why did this nine nine degrees thing why is that so unpleasant to a prasangika okay yeah right yeah uh, well and the other alarming thing we're at time but the other alarming thing is this idea that that yeah okay your intellectual understandings are stained but he says that there's he suggests that there's something about the way that you're understanding things in a way which is helpful to you to getting to nirvana 
um, is an impediment to you. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Like, to reach Buddhahood. Yeah. There, there That's is. That's pretty heavy. That's some kind of, I mean, uh, yeah. maybe we should read it more gently. You know what I mean? But uh -huh. it feels like that. That's pretty heavy that there's, you know, this is this metaphorical boat you need to cross the river that you have to ditch once you get across land again. Yeah, I think what he's saying is, yeah, they help you get rid of your negativity, negative emotions, but they are an impediment to become a Buddha. Yeah. Uh, the, the intellectualness, not the object of the intellect. You see, I mean, yeah. uh, the conclusion you come to when Geshe Michael teaches you the pen is not an impediment, but the process by which you get to that conclusion is still conceptual. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And has okay. to be eliminated. Yeah. Okay. That's right. pretty. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. It's not that the understanding of the pen is an impediment. Is an obstacle, but the how your mind is operating, the mode in which your mind is operating at that time is an obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. a cool. That's a cool idea. I think. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. okay. What's today? Twenty eight. Twenty seven. 28th. 28th. Okay, cool. And by the way, oh, your text is it's sexy. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, there's more discussion of this, okay? So, good. You what know, you there's a couple more paragraphs here, which are going to make it, you, you probably don't want to write that footnote until you get these three paragraphs. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then we go on to the Prasangika's presentation of the paths as opposed to their presentation of what you have to get rid of with the paths, okay? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, boss. And then look out, look, you're kind of, you know, you're close. Yeah, very. Yeah, you're gonna definitely finish by next turn. Okay, okay but yeah, he's gonna make us work for that last little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nick, what time we come back? 9.05. Can I give you one of these things? Yeah. Sashi puki chukshi ne tok dram jirav ling shi nyan de gyan padi sang ye shing du mik te u ar gi jokon nam dak shing la ju par shok iram guru rana mandala kanir yatayami ge wa di ke o kun Sunam yeshe tok tok shing, Sunam yeshe le jung we, Tampar kuni to par show. Yay! Thanks, boss. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys in five.